Hi there. Today I want to present a simplified way to look at the autonomic and the somatic nervous systems. Uh, let me orient you to this diagram in which shows the autonomic nervous system to include the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system and the somatic nervous system which controls your muscle movements. Now when you look at your sympathetic nervous system you'll see that you have a short right these right here are short preganglionic nerve fibers and then you'll have these longer postganglionic nerve fibers. As well, one of the short preganglionic nerve fibers right here will innervate the adrenal medulla and that action will cause the adrenal medulla to release epi and norepinephrine. Then you have the parasympathetic nervous system that has this long preganglionic nerve fiber and this short postganglionic nerve fiber. Now I mentioned these ganglionic items, okay? So the sympathetic ganglia, if you will, include the adrenal medulla and the sympathetic chain ganglia. And these are going to be along the spinal cord, uh, close to the spinal cord, if you will. And then the parasympathetic ganglia are near or on the organ, the target organ. Now with that being said, how is everything working? Well, let me mention too that the somatic nervous system, this includes your upper and your motor, upper and lower motor neurons. And this typically will be your lower motor neuron innervating the target muscle. Now, when the preganglionics of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system innervate their ganglia, right, what happens? Well, when the central nervous system says to itself, I'm going to fire my sympathetic nervous system, it releases acetylcholine centrally onto nicotinic neural receptors within the sympathetic ganglion and on the adrenal medulla there are nicotinic neuronal receptors. Now when acetylcholine binds to these nicotinic neuronal receptors in either the sympathetic ganglion or the adrenal medulla this acetylcholine will agonize or stimulate the nicotinic neuronal receptors within the ganglion or within the adrenal medulla. Now if you are an acetylcholine molecule attached to a nicotinic neuronal receptor in the adrenal medulla, an excitatory process occurs because this nicotinic neuronal receptor is an excitatory receptor it's an ionic, it allows sodium in, you're going to release epinephrine and norepinephrine into the circulation. Okay, And when you do that, you release epinephrine and norepinephrine into the circulation. It is going to arrive at the smooth muscle or the cardiac muscle or in glands and it, the norepinephrine and epinephrine is going to stimulate adrenergic receptors, whether they be alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, or beta-2. Now just think about that for a second. If I am epinephrine or norepinephrine, and I arrive at a smooth muscle on the bronchioles, for example. Now in the lungs, there are many beta-2 receptors. Well, Norepinephrine doesn't really have an affinity for beta-2, but epinephrine does. And so if I agonize a beta-2 receptor on bronchial smooth muscle, for example, I will activate, let's look over here at the top left, a beta-2, a GS protein. Huh? Well, let me explain this. 
this receptor chart on your top left shows in purple what epinephrine and norepinephrine will stimulate and in blue what acetylcholine will stimulate. Now when you look at alpha-1 this is associated with a GQ protein. When you look at alpha-2 GI, beta-1 GS, beta-2 GS, muscarinic-1 GQ, muscarinic-2 GI, Muscarinic 3 is a GQ, and then look at the nicotinic receptors. They're both ionic. That means when acetylcholine binds, it allows sodium in. So now when you look at this chart down here, and you say to yourself, wow, norepinephrine or epinephrine, when released from the adrenal medulla into the circulation, will bind to alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, or beta-2 receptors. I got it. I got that part when it comes to the adrenal medulla. So the sympathetic nervous system will release acetylcholine in the adrenal medulla and cause the activation of nicotinic neuronal receptors and release epinephrine and norepinephrine into the circulation, which will then go and bind to either alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, or beta-2 receptors. And if I look at the top left up here, I can see exactly what G-coupled pro proteins those are attached to. Got it. Now, if I'm a sympathetic preganglionic neuron, and I innervate the sympathetic chain ganglia, I can release acetylcholine onto nicotinic neuronal receptors, and then I can have my postganglionic neuron, which goes out to my target organs, will release norepinephrine onto the target organ. Now in this case, norepinephrine doesn't really have an affinity for beta-2 receptors. So norepinephrine released from the sympathetic chain ganglia will activate alpha-1, alpha-2, or beta-1 receptors. Now let's think about that in a couple ways. There's a lot of alpha-1 receptors on blood vessels. So if I release norepinephrine onto alpha-1 receptors in blood vessels, norepinephrine is going to stimulate those alpha-1 receptors that are attached to a GQ protein, and those vascular smooth muscle cells are going to contract. You'll get vasoconstriction. As well, it likes to activate beta-1 receptors. Well, we know that there's a lot of beta-1 receptors in the heart, when I stimulate a beta-1 receptor in the heart, I will activate a GS protein. And in the heart, that is going to increase rate. So that is what I'm doing if I'm a sympathetic, if I'm part of the sympathetic nervous system. As well, there's one more thing that releasing acetylcholine into the sympathetic chain ganglion and activating nicotinic neuronal receptors will do. When that happens, there's another postganglionic neuron that will activate a muscarinic 3 receptor in sweat glands and cause the body to sweat in an attempt to cool itself. So this muscarinic 3 receptor in sweat glands is the only one that is part of the sympathetic nervous system. This is the only thing that is not norepinephrine or epinephrine when you leave the ganglion from the sympathetic nervous system. Now let's look at the parasympathetic nervous system. And you can think that these two systems are always battling each other. You know the sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight, and you know your parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest nervous system. Well, we remember that the parasympathetic nervous system has this long preganglionic nerve fiber that will release acetylcholine into a parasympathetic ganglion that is on or near the target organ. And when that happens, the acetylcholine will bind to the nicotinic neuronal receptor and it will release acetylcholine onto the target organ. And in this case, acetylcholine will activate an M1, M2, or M3 receptor. Let me give you an example. M2 receptors are on the heart. When they're activated, we see in the top left in the blue box that M2 receptors are associated with a GI protein. That's inhibitory, so the heart rate will drop. 
Now let's finally look at what is not part of the autonomic nervous system, but the somatic nervous system. Acetylcholine in that instance is what causes your muscle to move when the lower motor neuron releases acetylcholine onto the smooth muscle or the skeletal muscle cell, it will activate a nicotinic muscle receptor, allow sodium in and cause a depolarization. That depolarization will create a motor end plate potential and eventually cause a muscle contraction. If you have any questions, send me an email at armygas at gmail.com. Thanks.